So for problem 48, um, we want to determine whether the series is convergent or divergent by expressing it as a telescoping sum. So for 48, for us to express it as a telescoping sum, the first thing that we have to do is we have to decompose this using partial fractions. So this is going to be the same thing as the sum from n is equal to 2 to infinity. So we're going to first factor it. So 1 over, if we... Um, factor out an n, we get n times n squared minus 1, so n squared minus 1, which in turn factors out to um, the n minus 1, that's a difference of squares, so this factors into 1 over n times n minus 1 times n plus 1. So that's what it factors out to. So once we have a factored expression, we're going to use partial fraction decomposition. And so what I want here, if I have 1 over n times n plus 1 times n minus 1, what I want to be able to do here is just express this as a over n plus b over n plus 1 plus c over n minus 1. So I want to be able to decompose this into a sum um, where each term has a different factor on the denominator. And so to do that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to join these fractions on the um, right-hand side. So to join the fractions, what I would do, so let me copy the left-hand side, so n times n plus 1 times n minus 1. And so what I would do here is, to join all of these fractions, we're going to have to multiply them all by the common denominator, which is n times n plus 1 times n minus 1. And if we do, the if we multiply um, everything by the common denominator, we're going to be left with a times n plus 1 times n minus 1, and then plus b times um, n times n minus 1, and lastly, plus c. So plus c times um, times n and then times n plus one. So that is what we get when we join the um, the right hand side. So we join this guy here into a single fraction. And since we're trying to set the left hand side equal to the right hand side, we can see that we've already accomplished that with a the denominator. They all have the same denominator. So we can go ahead and just ignore that and just focus on the numerator so that we can truly make these expressions equal to each other. So we have that this whole thing um, has to be equal to 1. And if this is true, then it has to be true for any value of n that I plug in, right? So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to choose strategic values of n to plug in instead of expanding this whole thing. So I'm going to choose the value n is equal to 0. The reason that I'm going to choose this value is that if I plug in n is equal to 0, this term is going to disappear because b times 0, that whole thing is going to go to 0, and then c times 0, that whole thing is going to be disappear, and I'm just going to be left with this a times n plus 1 times n minus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug in for n is equal to 0, and if I plug that in, I'm going to have 1 is equal to a times, that's going to be 0 plus 1, so 1 times 0 minus 1, so minus 1, plus b times, if I plug in 0, that's just going to go to 0, so plus 0, and then plus c times, if I plug in 0 here, that's just going to go to 0. So what we get here is that 1 is equal to 1 times minus 1 is minus a, and what this means here is that a is therefore equal to minus 1. So this is the conclusion that we get when... Um, when we plug in n is equal to 0. So we have one of the coefficients already. Now we need to find the other. So that was for the strategic value where n was equal to 0. So now let's plug in n is equal to 1. And the reason that I'm going to plug in is because if I do n is equal to 1, then when I plug it here, I'm going to have 1 minus 1. So this whole thing with a goes to 0. When I plug in here, I'm going to have um, 1 minus 1, so this whole thing with b goes to 0, and then the only thing that's going to be remaining is this um, term with c. So let's go ahead and plug in n is equal to 1. So if I plug it in, on the left-hand side I have 1 is equal to, so remember this is going to go 1 minus 1, which is 0, so this whole thing with a is going to go to 0, so 0 plus, for b the same thing, 1 minus 1, this whole thing is going to go to 0, so plus 0, and then plus, if I plug in 1, for c, I'm going to have plus c times 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2. So what I have here is that 1 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus 
2 times c to c, which therefore means that c is going to be equal to 1 half. So that's our other coefficient. And now we're just missing b. So, oops. So to find b, now we're going to use the value n is equal to minus 1. So I'm going to use n is equal to minus 1. And the reason that I'm going to use this is because if I plug in minus 1 here, minus 1 plus 1, that whole thing goes to 0. If I plug in minus 1 here, minus 1 plus 1, that whole thing goes to 0. And I'm just left with the um, terms in b. So let's go ahead and plug in n is equal to minus 1. So I have, oops, I have 1 is equal to a times, so if I do minus 1 here, this whole thing's going to go to 0, so that's just plus 0a, so plus 0, plus, if I plug in minus 1, I'm going to have b times minus 1, and then times minus 1 minus 1, so minus 2, and then plus c times minus 1 here, this goes to 0, so that's just 0, so what we have is 1 is equal to um, minus 1 times minus 2 is 2, so 1 is equal to 2b, which therefore means that b is going to be equal to 1 half if I divide both sides of the equation by 2. So once I have this whole thing, I now have the coefficients. So let's plug in those coefficients. So we got that a was equal to minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as minus 1 here. We had that b was equal to 1 half. So I'm going to put 1 half here. And then we had that c was equal to 1 half. So one half there. And that's it for our par partial fraction decomposition. And if you want to check that this does work, all you have to do here is once you find these coefficients, just join these into a single fraction. And you're going to see that after you simplify, it is in fact going to give you this expression right here. So we are now ready to rewrite this as, we're now ready to rewrite this as the sum for n is equal to 2 to infinity, and the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to order it so that it goes um, it goes n minus 1, n, and then n plus 1, because that's going to help us eventually figure it out if we can order it correctly. So I'm going to have 1 half, oops, so I'm going to have, um, I'm going to factor out the 1 half, so that's 1 half times 1 over n minus 1, and then um, minus 1 over n, and then plus 1 half over n plus 1. So uh, I'm going to factor out the 1 half, so plus 1 half times 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so we're almost ready to begin expanding. So just to recap what we did, all we did here was we we began with this expression, we factored it into n times n plus 1 times n uh, n minus 1, then we decompose that into these fractions here, and now we just rewrote them, um, just ordering so that it goes n minus 1, n, and then n plus 1, and also we factor out the 1 half because that's going to make it easier, so now I'm just going to factor out the 1 half from all of these terms and put it outside, so I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to, I'm going to put 1 half outside, 1 half the sum from n is equal to 2 to infinity, so that first one goes away, so that's 1 over n minus 1. So if I factor out 1 half from minus 1 over n, um, remember that factoring, it means dividing. So if I divide minus 1 over n divided by 1 half, it just multiplies by 2. So that's going to be minus 2 over n. And then factor out the 1 half from the last term, so then plus 1 over n plus 1. So um, that's how we rewrite this whole thing. That's our expression. So I'm just going to copy it. So let me copy this here, and I'm going to rewrite it down here. Yeah. So once we did that whole thing, we just arrived at this expression, which is what we're going to use to expand, because now this is going to turn into a telescoping sum. So actually, I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to erase all of this and then copy the expression that I got right next to it. So, there. So this sum here is equal to that. And once we have expanded it, now we're ready to, um, to add in some terms and then simplify it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to expand it up to, let's say, n is equal to 6. So let's plug in some terms here. So remember the 1 half um, multiplies everything, so I'm going to leave the 1 half outside. So we begin with n is equal to 2. So if we plug in n is equal to 2, that goes 
1 over 2 minus 1, which is 1, so 1 over 1, and then minus 2 over n, so minus 2 over 2, and then plus 1 over um, 2 plus 1, so plus 1 third. So this is the, the case where n is equal to 1. So let me maybe just put this here. So this is where n is equal to, sorry, n is equal to 2, because that's the starting point. And then plus, now let's do where n is equal to 3. So if n is equal to 3, let me just move this. So if n is equal to 3, we're going to have 1 over 3 minus 1, so 1 over 2, and then minus 2 over um, 3, so 2 over n, 2 over 3, because n is equal to 3, and then uh, plus 1 over n plus 1, so since n is equal to 3, we're going to have plus 1 over 4, and this is the situation where n is equal to 3. Now let's do where n is equal to 4. So uh, plus 1 over 4 minus 1 in the first term, so 1 over 3, and then minus 2 over n, so minus 2 over 4, and then uh, plus 1 over n plus 1, so plus 1 over 5, and then um, maybe let's do one more for n is equal to 5. So plus, so this is where n is equal to 5, and then we have 1 over 5 minus 1, so 1 over 4, and then minus 2 over n, so minus 2 over 5, and then plus 1 over n plus 1, so plus 1 over 6. Okay, so this is what we have right now, and let's look at what the pattern is. So, let's focus on the minuses, because the minuses are the things that are going to cancel out, because we're adding a bunch of stuff and then we're removing. So, if we focus on this minus two-thirds, if we take plus one-third, plus one-third, and then minus two-thirds, these terms are going to cancel out, right? So, we can just put a dash here. Um, now let's focus on the minus two-fourths. So minus two-fourths, if I take plus one-fourth and then plus one-fourth, those are going to cancel out. So we put a dash over here. Um, and then this, uh, this um, one over one minus two over two, so two over two is just one, these two are also going to cancel out. So these two are also going to cancel out. And what are we left with? We are left with... We're left with one half on the outside times, um, that's going to be one half, and then plus one fifth. So remember that one fifth, we ended here where n was equal to five, right? So we're left with plus one over n, and then minus two over five, and n is equal to five, so minus two over n, and then plus one over six. So if n is equal to five, that's plus one over n plus 1. So that's the result of our sum. But let's just add one more term, n is equal to 6, to confirm that this is truly the case. So if we add n is equal to 6, we're going to have, so plus, and this is where n is equal to 6, so um, 1 over n minus 1, so 1 over 5, and then minus 2 over n, so 2 over 6, and then um, plus 1 over n plus 1, so plus 1 over 7. So plus 1 over 7. And this is where n is equal to 6. So let's just check that that is truly the case. Well, if we do this, notice that now we have minus 2 fifths and then plus 1 fifth, plus 1 fifth. So that cancels out as well. And now we're left with, um, what are we left with in this situation? We're left with um, 1 over over 6, and remember n is equal to 6, so that's 1 over n, and then minus 2 over 6, and remember that n is equal to 6, so minus 2 over n, and then plus 1 over 7, n is equal to 6, so that's n plus 1. And if you can, if you compare it, this guy with this guy, it is exactly the same. So that we can see that no matter how many terms we're adding, these term, th this expression is always going to be the same. So, we, by expanding all of this, we have been able to prove that actually this whole sum, everything is going to cancel out except um, this one half. So let me do that in a different color. So except this one half, this one half has nothing to cancel with. And then this um, plus one over n, and then minus two over n, and then plus one over n plus one. So those are the only terms that are going to remain, no matter how many n's you add. So once we have this, we're now ready to rewrite this as, so let me erase this whole thing. 
So we're now ready to rewrite this as one half times, and whatever was left was just one half, and then this plus one over n minus two over n, so if we do one over n minus two over n, that's just gonna be equal to minus one over n. So we're gonna rewrite this whole thing as minus one over n, so um, minus one over n, and then plus one over n plus one. So all we did here was we took these two terms and we joined them into one to simplify it. So that's the result of our sum. For any value of n that you plug in, that's what it's gonna give you. So now we just have to, since we want the value of n that's infinity, we have to take the limit as n goes to infinity here. So if we take the, the limit as n goes to infinity of this whole thing, of one half times one half minus one over n plus one over n plus one, what do we get? Well, we get one half on the outside, the limit of one half, it just stays one half, it doesn't go anywhere, and this is gonna be minus one divided by infinity is zero, so minus zero, and then plus one divided by infinity plus one is one divided by infinity, which is zero, so plus zero, and so the final result is just one half times one half, so one fourth. And that is it for problem number 48. So just to recap what we did, first we began with this expression here, and then we factored it, and once we factored, we got one over n times n plus one times n minus one. And after we did this, we decomposed it into par partial fractions, and we got this expression here. Where with one half outside, I factored that out to make it easier. And so once we did, we expanded, and then we saw that no matter how many terms we add, the sum is also go always going to be this guy right here. And then once we have that term for the sum, we just plug in or take the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we get um, we get one quarter.